In this example, I will solve problems 2.87 and 2.91 of the textbook, Mechanical Vibration from Brown, and we will find the natural frequency for different configurations of pendulum. The first one, we have a mass attached to a massless bar, uh, and the length of the bar is L. In the second one, we have something similar, but we have added a spring at a distant A, in the third one, we have an invert pendulum and also a spring. And in the last one, we have the same as the first one, but the bar has a mass M. The first thing that we will do is establish which coordinate system we will use. And I will choose to use the tangent and normal components. The tangent will be along the path, which is a circular path, and the normal will point towards the point where we are rotating. And we know that the tangent component of the acceleration is angular acceleration times r, which is in this case the r is the length of the pendulum, and the normal acceleration is velocity squared over radius of curvature. The velocity is omega l, that square divided by l, then we get omega which is theta dot square times L. Let's now start with the first case where we have a mass hanging on of a bar that is massless. We do our free body diagram and we draw the weight and the distance will be L sine theta, the distance from the point of rotation. Then we have the tension of the bar and then we do our kinetic forces, which is mass times tangent acceleration and mass times normal acceleration. Now, we do our equations of motion. And we take moment respect to point O. External moment will be equal to kinetic moment. And then the moment done by the weight will be negative the distance which is L sine theta times the weight, and that will be equal to the moment done by the kinetic forces. The kinetic forces is mass time acceleration times L, which is the perpendicular distance to that acceleration. I can write both terms in the same side of the equation, and I can cancel one of the L's. And then remember that for small angular displacements, we will have that sine of theta approximated to theta and cosine of theta is approximated to 1. So we can write our equation of motion in this form. And as you see here, um, m cancels out as well. And our natural frequency becomes the square root of g over l. Notice that the natural frequency of a pendulum is independent of the mass and therefore independent of the weight and independent of the material of that ball or that mass. It's only a function of the gravity and the length of the pendulum. Let's analyze the case B. In this case, we will also draw the free body diagram and the difference with the case before is that we have a force of the spring. So we have the weight, the tension, and a force of the spring. We also have our kinetic forces, which is mass times acceleration. And then we do our equation of motion. The external moments are, in this case, both the same, the moment of the weight. And now we have the moment done by that force of the spring. The distance from O to the force of the spring is A, cosine of theta, and the force of the spring is A K times the distance, which is A sine of theta. And this will be equals to the moment created by the kinetic forces. Again, cosine of theta becomes 1, sine of theta becomes theta, and my equation of motion simplifies to ml squared theta 2 dots plus l mg plus a square k or that multiplied theta. And as you see, 
we can get our natural frequency here. The natural frequency is the equivalent constant of the spring, which is the term that goes with theta divided by the equivalent mass, which is the term that goes with the angular acceleration. And this is the expression for our natural frequency. As you see, in this case, the natural frequency has a dependence on the mass and has a dependence on the position of the spring and the constant of the spring. Let's now do the analysis of the third case, which is an inverted pendulum with a spring. Let's do the free body diagram. We have the weight, we have the tension of the bar, and we have the force of the spring. And the force of the spring is AK sine of theta, which is the displacement of that point, right? And then we have our kinetic forces with mass acceleration, a tangent acceleration, and mass times normal acceleration. We do our equations of motion. In this case, it's only one, it's the moment respect to point O, which is the point of rotation of the bar. We get L sine of theta. And in this case, the moment done by the weight is a negative, and the moment done by the spring force is positive, because it's contraclockwise. And then we have the inertia moments are also negative, because we are making the bar rotate in clockwise direction. So it will be L times the mass times the tangent acceleration. If we put all the terms in only one side of the equation and we simplify the sine and cosine as we did for the previous cases, we get that m L squared theta to dots minus L m g theta plus A squared k theta is equal to zero. And we can further simplify this as ML squared theta to dot plus, in brackets, A squared K minus LMG. All that multiplies theta equals to zero. And here the natural frequency will be the square root of K equivalent divided by the mass equivalent. And again, we have A squared K minus LMG divided by ML squared. Please notice that in this case, if the component of the weight is greater than the component of the spring, which is a squared k, this radical becomes negative and that doesn't have a physical meaning. It means that the system is unstable. So the weight will overcome the force of the spring and then the invert pendulum will not be able to stay vibrating in its vertical position. And notice that between those three cases that we just analyzed, the one that have the greater natural frequency is the second case. Let's now analyze the last case where we have a regular pendulum but the bar has mass. So we will have two elements that accumulate kinetic energy, the mass at the end of the bar and the mass of the bar. In our free body diagram, we will have both weights, the weight of the ball and the weight of the mass located at the center of gravity of the bar. Then we have the tension, and then we have our kinetic forces, which is mass time acceleration, but we also have the mass moment of inertia of the bar times the angular acceleration of the bar. Let's now get our equation of motion. We get the moment respect to the point of rotation, and that will be, again, the forces, the external forces will be the moment done by both weights, the weight done by the mass of the bar will be L one half sine of theta, capital M, G, and the moment done by the weight of the ball will be L sine of theta, M, G. 
and that will be equal to the moment of the uh, kinetic forces, right? So that will be the moment done by the acceleration of the particle, which is L times M theta two dots L. And now we have to add the mass moment of inertia of the bar times theta two dots. The mass moment of inertia of the bar will be one third of capital N L squared. That's the mass moment of inertia of a bar in its end. Remember that if we would have taken the moment in the center of gravity, that would have been 1 12th m times L squared. So we put that all in one side of the equation. We have m L squared plus 1 third capital M L squared. All that multiplies to the angular acceleration, and then we have the components that multiply theta. And the natural frequency will be the square root of whatever is our equivalent constant of the spring, which goes besides theta divided by our equivalent mass, which is the term that goes with the angular acceleration. We were able to find the natural frequency of this pendulum that has a part with mass. We were able then to find the natural frequency of the four different configurations of pendulums.